Okay, I'm going to do a quick and dirty video here on how I do the cutscenes that Jack dislikes so strongly. <laughs> um, these, these are actually multi-cam scenes. Uh, usually when I do my flights I have one camera on my head and one facing front in the airplane, one back in the airplane. That varies a little bit. And the same thing when I do build videos. Sometimes I have one above my head and one, one coming in at each of two different angles. Uh, just to, uh, to try and pick up different parts of builds, uh, maybe at a different angle you can see how I'm holding a knife or, or something different like that. Anyway, I use PowerDirector for this and I use the multi-cam feature. So for this, this is a simple glue test I've done. It's a nice uh, nice short one. I've done a glue test for chloroplast, um, or yeah, choroplast, sorry, uh, material. So here I am in the regular editor. I'm not going to show you how to get clips into the regular editor. That that's uh, either you know how to do that with PowerDirector or you don't, or when you get PowerDirector you will know how. So I have six clips here. Unfortunately if I choose all six it's going to put them all in one timeline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the three clips that correspond with uh, the first clips from each of the cameras. This is just a little shortcut that I found. So I'll do that. So there's the Canon, the Mobius, and the SJ4000. If you're wondering why I'm not using a proper screen capture software to do this instead of my camera, it slows down my machine too much doing the multicam editing and, and it makes it basically unusable. So I'm going to go to plugins and I'm going to go to multicam designer. And you'll see my three clips have come up here in these three, uh, three windows. So I need to add my second clips in here. So my first window is my Canon. So I'm going to import from Media Room. I'm going to go to the second Canon and you can see it comes up. Oh, no, that's the SJ4000. Second Canon. There we go. Right there. So that's been added to that clip and you can see down here on the timeline the second Canon clip. So I'm going to do the same thing for uh, Camera 2, which is the Mobius. Second Mobius clip. And I'm going to add in my second SJ4000 clip. So you can see all of my clips over here, and they're all just lined up starting at zero. Now I'm going to use camera one as my source, that's the Canon, because because that has the best audio quality. Unfortunately for this video, I had it turned down to four megabytes per second, which, uh, or maybe it's megabits. Anyway, um, it, I had it turned way down from something I'd done before, so the video quality isn't quite going to be as good as it normally would out of my Canon. So I'm going to do audio analysis based on camera one. I click apply. This is going to go through and this is going to analyze the audio coming from all three cameras and align the clips so that they're, they're aligned in the timeline based on, on the audio. You can also align based on uh, keyframes and some other things, but uh, this is the one I use the most. So the longer your video is, the longer this uh, analyzing step is going to be. For this uh, glue test, uh, I think, I don't, know, I, I don't know, maybe I have 20 minutes of video in total, which is, seems like an awful lot considering what I got accomplished. But, uh, so it'll take a few seconds here to analyze it. This is PowerDirector 12 that I'm using, uh, and it allows you up to four clips. Um, PowerDirector 13, I believe, allows more clips, and it allows you to do it in the normal timeline, which is down here. This is the plugin. This is the normal timeline, which allows up to 100 clips. And so I'm looking forward to getting PowerDirector 13. It'll allow me to do things rather than cut scenes. I could do picture in picture with the timelines aligned uh, for different cameras, which would be glorious. So over here, you see that uh, that they've been aligned. Uh, maybe I'll just increase that scale a little bit so you can see the offsets. So you can see camera, uh, I started by pressing uh, record on the Canon, then the Mobius, then the SJ4000. So I'm going to go up to a point here where I'm just before the, the last camera comes in. I'm going to just hit play and turn up my audio. And you'll hear my extra annoying voice, video on video. As I get ready. Usually I'll... Oh. So re Usually I'll give myself some sort of clue, like synchronizing cameras or something else. So let's see, uh, let's see how incompetent I was. Okay. 
Recently, I built a couple flying wings using this kind of material. It's a corrugated plastic. Um, some people call it. So it doesn't sound like I gave myself any intro time, so let's start over again and see when I should start recording. Hello. Let's start so right after recently, hello. Recently, I built a couple flying wings <laughs> using this So you kind can of see this, this recording based on this first plastic. camera. I'm going to switch over to camera three because it actually shows something. So let me just stop it here. So I didn't like that. I didn't like that because camera one wasn't actually showing anything. So go back to just before there in the timeline, back before where I said hello. And I'm going to switch immediately to camera three and start recording. So what I'll do is real time I'll be watching these three feeds. And, uh, and as I like what I'm seeing from each feed, the overhead, the SJ4000 or the Canon, I'll swap the camera in real time. So I'm going to start out with camera three as well now, and you'll see that it'll replace this with camera three. So recently, I built a couple flying wings using this kind of material. It's a so you can see that I'm actually plastic. playing to camera three here. So that's the one I should be using. Uh, this the audio will always come from the camera that's on the audio for, source. Uh, for flying wings, it's fairly light. Um, what I haven't figured out yet is what the right glue is to use on it. So far I've been using hot glue. So I'm just shuffling things around. I'm going to shift to the overhead a for a few seconds. To come apart. Now you see the lighting in uh, here is horrible well, in this which room. Which isn't a big deal. I can bring my hot glue gun. As you can see I've got this little, uh, okay. this little guy here. And there you go. I, I showed the hot glue gun to the wrong camera. If I want. And I'll switch over to that camera. Glue gun. But still I'd rather not be repairing things that aren't broken. So I'm going to try a couple glues here. Back and, over to here. Uh, we'll leave it for 12 hours or so, and then come back in the morning and see how it did. So the glues I'm going to be trying are marine goo. So there you go. That worked out well because I was playing to that camera. And I see I'm going to do all the glues to this same camera. Super glue. Elmer's Ultimate Polyurethane Glue. Uh, some Hobby King EPP Foam Cure glue, which I'm not expecting to work very well. Elmer's spray adhesive. Get that one over there. Let's see. Here we go. Now I'll swap cameras because I'm showing it to this other camera and back to this one. A 15 minute epoxy, two part epoxy, and of course hot glue. So I will glue these together. These are all small pieces, about the same size, about one inch by two inches and then I'll look at them in the morning. So let's start, actually that's going to make the most mess. Let's start with the one that's going to make the least mess. So I'll get a little overhead shot here so you can see how messy my table is. I'll do thing glue first. And I'm just, for now I'm just going to line these up. I'm just putting a little water on there because that's what you do with polyurethane glue. I'll just line them up beside their, or behind their... Uh, so there you go, from this camera glues. angle I can see this the best. Me, me putting the glue on above, but my hand is blocking in here. You can't see it at all. So I'm going to stick with this one. Online, so now I put the camera right in the way of it. Very well. So I'll sw switch over to above. And you can show me Still. working the glue in. Because I have it, I'm going to add it in. And I'll just use as many of these little clamps as I can. And then I'll go for larger clamps where I have to. There we go. And you can see that I just put the clamp down. The urethane glue is done. And switch back to this camera for the next glue. Let's do all the ones that I can do easily first. So I have hot glue right here, so let's do that. That way I can unplug my hot glue gun and not drain my battery. Okay, we're back. I've edited the full uh, glue test video uh, from start to finish. And now I press stop. And I'm going to hit OK. And this should pull the video back into my PowerDirector timeline. And there we go, we can see <clears throat> the full timeline here with the video. And of course, what I'd like to do first thing after, after this is save my project. Uh, Coroplast glue test. Because you just never know when something might crash. And there's a significant amount of work. I mean, this this one's um, 
you know, this one's 20 minutes maybe uh, in the in the multicam editor. You can imagine with my eight or ten part uh, build series or some of my longer two hour builds, after you spend two hours in the multicam editor, you really don't want to lose that work. You start getting nervous. Some of those I, I'll even do in parts. But here I'm just kind of scroll through the timeline. And you can see you see where the you see the audio is all one piece except for right here you can see it's split and that's where I split between the glue tests or uh, applying the glues and trying to uh, take the components apart uh, so that that's a natural split there so I'll, I might put in some some sort of stuff there and I might do some cutting and editing so right now within PowerDirector I can watch just click on movie and see so how, how my clips work. I built a couple flying wings using this kind of material. It's a corrugated plastic. Um, so we'll watch at this point here plastic. you'll see okay. that it'll switch to a, to a different clip back and forth. I'm just kind of getting an idea of how for, it's going to look. For flying wings it's fairly light. Um, what I haven't figured out yet is what the right And I can add my regular transitions so far and I've other things at this glue. point. And I found that it has a tendency to So there I'm switching to the overhead view. Now this isn't uh, uh, full definition. Isn't Power Director kind of dumbs it down a little bit. As you can see I've but uh, this little... Uh, there we go. We switch to the third camera. Guy here back over to the first camera. That I can so you can see that it, it's all in the timeline. And now my video is one contiguous uh, piece that I can now add some uh, different... Maybe some text to or render. So anyway, uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of, of how I put together my multi-camera videos in PowerDirector. <clears throat> it's not rocket science. Uh, the tool, as of version 12, makes it pretty easy. I'm sure there's other editing tools that, uh, that do similar things. Uh, but before version 12, at least in PowerDirector, if I wanted to do something like this, I'd have to be adding my different segments in different parts of the timeline. I'd have to be manually adjusting the segments to be synchronized based on the audio and that takes a really long time I mean it, it and you never get it hundred percent correct so just that audio synchronization that's the biggest thing uh, the real-time switching between tracks is nice and with 13 they they brought in the tracks in the regular timeline and, and audio synchronization which is something I actually asked for I'm not indicating that they listened to me I'm sure lots of people asked for that um, so uh, there you go hopefully you enjoyed this and uh, Leave a comment and uh, if you have any questions, so I'll certainly be willing to answer them.